Hey, Tim DeStasio here back at my house, and this is my next video in the series, Making Measure Quick Easy, where I explore how a contractor can implement the Measure Quick process and be more successful in their business. Now, it is a frosty December morning. I'm starting to feel the cold a little bit, so I'm gonna be putting on a coat pretty soon, but we're gonna, we're gonna be checking my heat pump now in heating operation. Now, Measure Quick recently released their guided workflows for heat pump heating operation, not the non-invasive test, Test, rather the gauge up test. So we're going to be gauging up again, even though we really shouldn't have to. I want to demonstrate this process. Anytime you install a heat pump, let's say in the summertime, you do want to come back six months later on a cold day and check the operation. And this workflow is built for that. Now, since I benchmarked my system back in the summer, after that, I made a few airflow adjustments. I reduced my blower speed and I did some throttling damper position adjustments so that I can put that cold air in places where it wasn't going before. So my airflow has changed. My static pressure is gonna be a little bit different. And I'm interested to see whether Measure Quick recognizes those airflow adjustments and tells me about it, maybe even throws throwing up a flag. Another thing to keep in mind is that we can only benchmark a system in cooling mode. And I did that back in the summer when I installed the system. In heat pump heating mode, we can simply do a test, but every OEM will tell you that the proper way to commission a heat pump is in cooling mode. So let's say that the changes I made after I commissioned my system back in the summertime uh, did throw a flag. What I'm going to have to do is wait till next summer when I check the unit again and just recommission it with those new settings. And that way Measure Quick knows, okay, this is how the system runs. We're locked in. If I see any deviations from that, I'm going to let you know. So again, this is the Measure Quick heat pump heating guided workflow. It's going to be a step-by-step -step process that makes it so much easier than Measure Quick has ever been. Let's get started. Okay, after opening up Measure Quick, we select heat pump installation and it explains what the guided workflow is gonna have us do. Then it's gonna go into what some of the smart probes that we're gonna need and the meter in order to do this workflow. So here are the tools that we're gonna need. We're gonna need three temperature and humidity hygrometers, one for outside, one for return, one for supply. We're gonna need static pressure manometers, and we're also going to need our temperature clamps, one for the liquid line and also one for the suction line. So let's go ahead and get these probes deployed and get started. Measure Quick will only allow you to advance in the workflow if you have turned on all the required probes. And if you haven't, it will remind you what to turn on. The next thing is we're going to turn off power to the indoor unit and it's going to have us confirm that. Then it's going to step us through the workflow. Now, if, as you can see, we've already geolocated the site. We've done the customer information because this system has already been commissioned and benchmarked before. So let's start inside. So let's start inside. We're going to first deploy our return probe. Uh, this probe just simply needs to lay on the grill. It doesn't need to go in the grill necessarily. It's not going to hurt you if it does because I'm not worried about air entrainment. So simply just place a probe on the return grill. For the supply probe, we need to put that inside the grill, so up in the boot. That way we avoid air entrainment, which is where the hot air is gonna flow around the probe, but not actually go through it. It'll actually pull less than conditioned air across the probe, throwing off your reading. So to avoid that, just stick your probe in the boot and you'll be accurate every time. After deploying the indoor probes, we next zero our manometer. Now the very first thing you wanna do before connecting your manometers is always zero them. On these field piece, you just simply tap that button once, it's gonna flash blue a few times. That should zero the manometer, but just to make sure, you can go into your probe manager and you can look at your pressure manometers and your pressure gauges and you can manually zero them which is a great feature now because they do get off calibration every now and then and have to be frequently zeroed and then you're ready to deploy now for my system i've got permanent static pressure connections i just need to slide my probe into of course you'll need to drill a test port and you're going to want to use those static pressure probes that come with your field piece kit for the most accurate measurement. So this is our supply duct. We'll do the same thing for return duct. Even though last time we commissioned the system and benchmarked it, we set everything up in the system profile. Measure Quick is just going to ask us to review it again, just in case something maybe was entered in incorrectly, or maybe something about the system has changed since we were here. The next thing we're going to do is verify the electrical information is still correct. So just scroll through there, make sure everything is how you left it, and move on. 
and now we're ready to turn on the indoor unit and it's going to step us through that process as well. Well, we're done with the indoor unit. Now it's time to move to the outdoor unit. So the first thing we're going to do, of course, is turn off our outdoor disconnect and deploy our outdoor probes. All right, next step, obviously we've got to take the top off for this one. We're going to need to put our suction temperature probe on the true suction line. So yes, that does involve taking the fan guard off. You want to make sure, of course, power's off. Be very careful doing it. Make sure you position it in a way that's not going to get whacked by the blade. But yes, you do need to measure true suction. Notice where I've put my outdoor air temperature sensor. Of course, you want to avoid it touching the coil, being influenced by the coil. And you want to keep it pretty low, but I'm keeping this at a direct sunlight. I want to measure the true temperature of the air coming into the coil. I don't want this to be influenced by the heat coming off the sun. Remember in winter time when you're checking heat, the sun is lower. So it's gonna have more of an effect on the side of the unit than you may expect. So make sure you position this in a nice shaded area away from direct sunlight, also away from touching the coil or anything else that might falsely influence the temperature it senses because outdoor temperature is going to be a huge driver in Measure Quick's calculations of this system's performance in heat pump heating mode. And the liquid line temperature clamp goes on a liquid line. Make sure you got a nice clean spot on that pipe so you're getting a nice accurate reading. Photo document any outdoor issues if there are any. And then Measure Quick's going to have us review the outdoor system profile as well. So just like we did with the indoor system, we're just going to verify that information is correct. Once we've done that, we're going to turn the disconnect back on and get the system running. So the next thing we need to do is make sure our system is running and to stage heating. So I'm gonna just bring the set point up a couple of degrees past where we normally set it so that I ensure that my system is running in second stage. And I can verify that on the Ecobee app as well, or I can even verify it on the thermostat. Okay, so another reason why I wanna talk about putting that suction temperature probe on the suction line, which requires you to take the condenser fan grate or the top off the unit, is that typically when you're on these jobs, you're gonna to have to take top off anyway. There's gonna be debris down in there. Maybe you're on a maintenance, maybe you're on a service call, but either way, you're gonna to wanna to inspect components down in there anyway. So we are not adding an unnecessary step by asking you to grab that suction temperature, even if it requires taking the top off the unit, because you're probably gonna to have to do it anyway if you're doing a good job for the customer. Heat pumps take a while to stabilize, so you do not want to rush this process. Of course, Measure Quick is going to slow you down because it's not going to make any diagnosis until the system is stable. But as it stabilizes, you can go ahead and look at what your probes are reading and maybe just start looking for some trends. Now, one thing that I notice is that I have zero degrees superheat. That's something I'm going to need to come back to and pay attention to during this test. While we wait for the system to stabilize, let's go ahead and get our meter connected to Bluetooth and ready to read. First thing we're going to do, we got the meter turned off. We're going to hit this plus button. That's going to bring up, that's our hot menu. We're going to hit the toolbar to look at our toolbox. And we've got our IDM 550. However, it's not connected. And the reason why it's not connected is because it's turned off. So we're going to turn it on. We're going to set it to watts. It's going to start putting out a Bluetooth signal. And now we should be ready to connect. And we are connected. Okay, so in order to take these readings, we need to be able to easily access our line voltage wires and our power coming in uh, electrical connection. So what I've done is taken the dust cover off my disconnect. I've got alligator clamp meter leads, which I highly suggest that you use. And I've got my amp clamp. And as you can see, we're reading volts, amps, and watts. Now, what do we do with that? Well, let's go back to measure quick. In the electrical measurement screen, we can read what the meter is reading, and we just need to capture those readings and tell it either to go to the air handler or to the outdoor unit. Well, let's now move to the outdoor unit. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to collect those readings using the amp clamp and the meter leads reading volts. That's going to give us watts, and we're going to send those readings and capture them as the outdoor unit readings. The system is now stabilized, and it looks like Measure Quick has some diagnostics for us. I bet it has something to do with that zero degrees superheat that we're still reading. So let's go ahead and look at what those diagnostics are. Yep, 
it's telling us that we may have a, an outdoor TXV bulb that may be loose, and that's because we're not reading any superheat. That is something I'm gonna have to look into further. I do not want to ignore that. Now, some of the other diagnostics have to do with static pressure, and that makes sense because I made some static pressure adjustments, some air balancing, some fan speed adjustments, and MeasureQuick will recognize that I'm running a very different static pressure than when I did when I first commissioned and benchmarked the system, and it wants me to look into that further which I will do. But the main thing that I am worried about is that zero degree superheat. As I scroll through some of the other probe readings, everything else looks pretty normal, but I am very concerned about that superheat. You can see MeasureQuick doesn't even give us a system score. Let's continue on with the workflow. And here we have a chance to put down any notes in any of the subsystems. That's sort of like the air filtration, the condensate removal. Those subsystems within my major HVAC system that we can make some notes, document any issues, any adjustments that we've needed to make. So I'm going to go ahead and put in a note here that the reason why the external static pressure is up to 0.3 instead of the original 0.15-ish uh, that MeasureQuick was looking for is because I made some airflow adjustments after commissioning the system last time. Once all that's done, we do have the option to stream the data to somebody in the office to give us some help. In this case, we're not going to do that. We're going to go straight to generating the pro report. We can also generate a customer report. As you can see, the pro report is very, very detailed. It tells us what all of our subsystems are, if they're in the red, the yellow, or the green. But if you notice, there is no system score, and that's because our static pressure was way off, and so it was not able to even remotely score the system. And that's a problem for Measure Quick. Now we know the reason why it can't score. It's because I made some airflow adjustments after commissioning it last time. But Measure Quick doesn't know that. Well, we can share this report and we can hit system finalization. And that's just going to be a checklist of things that will avoid really annoying callbacks, like forgetting to turn the disconnect back on, forgetting to put the panel back on. Everything that we've all done that definitely we worry about technicians that work under us do. Once we've done that, we hit finished and the workflow is complete. Now I've got some work to do about that zero degree superheat, but so far, very impressive. What am I going to do about the zero superheat fault? Well, it's definitely something I'm going to investigate further. The very next step for me is to go through the installation manual and just get familiar with it again. Some things I'm going to pay attention to is the thermistor electrical readings versus what the actual temperature readings should be. This may be something as simple as a thermistor being off calibration, or it could be one of my smart probes being out of calibration. I'm going to get to the bottom of that, but you can be sure that I will have a video on that at a later time. For now, thanks for watching, and as always, be safe.